Will y'all please give a warm Christian high welcome to the Collingsworth family.
This is Olivia Diane. She's our youngest daughter. She's going to sing for you. without knowing that Jesus loves you. I'm the dad of this clan, you can tell by looking. My name is Phil Collinsworth, and uh, that pretty girl played the piano a few minutes ago. She'd been married to me for almost 35 years. Her name is Kim, and when she tears loose on a piano, she tears loose. Matter of fact, that's her own piano. We take it with us everywhere we go. You just heard from Olivia. She's our youngest, 
and Philip Jr. is right here singing the tenor part, and that is Brooklyn and Courtney. They're over there. They're going to play for you this morning. Hey, Kim, I love this. You guys will under you guys will recognize this. It's the Nashville Symphony Orchestra joining them this morning. You raise me up. How many of you saw our, our big black tour buses over there on your way over this morning? So I know it's got to be unique that these four right here were raised on tour buses. We tour all over the country, have for 20 years, and so they've had a very unique lifestyle. 
the three, the two oldest there and Philip, they're all married, have their own families, and their spouses travel with us. And they do all the auxiliary work. So it's, a, it's a very much a family affair. Um, but we don't live on the buses. Don't worry about that. We have houses at home, and we live normal when we're at home. That's Cincinnati, Ohio. That's a long way from San Diego. That's home for us. And, uh, man, it's great to be here with you this morning. Hey, Brooklyn, grab your microphone. This one's got a lot of words and a lot of fun words. You've heard the story of Noah and the ark. Listen to this. of men and he warned them time and time again they didn't want to listen they were doing what they wanted to do so Noah built an ark out of gopher wood cause God told him how so he knew he should then he loaded up his family and the animals two by two depend on him before no one knew what a rain drop was no one knew a god he could totally trust and when the world and waters might have washed him away oh no one knew enough to float on faith and that's certainly the thing to do oh when you know taken a piano lesson in your life? You ever taken a piano lesson? Boy, there's a ton of you. So you all want to come up and play one duet with Mrs. Collinsworth? Man, when mama gets a hold of that piano, things get exciting. I'm telling you what. She has played piano since she was three years old. She loves the piano more than anything else in the world. I mean, she just, it just floats her boat. So how many of you ever heard of an old spiritual called Joshua fit to battle a Jericho. Ever heard that old song? And it tells the story of the, in front of the Bible, of Joshua and them marching around the walls. Well, you probably never heard walls fall down on a piano before, but you're probably going to for the first time this morning. Joshua fit to battle a Jericho and the walls came tumbling down.
So Pastor Grant is going to let you guys ask us some questions because uh, it's, it's always interesting to see what you're thinking. Is anybody ready to play a duet with Kim on the piano yet? Me? I heard somebody say, oh, he took it back quick. So Pastor Grant is, I think he's uh, at least solicited Somebody over here some, got a question? Some questions. Any questions? It always takes somebody to break the ice, right? Yeah, come on. Oh, we got a question over here. Over here Josh, somewhere. I'm coming, Josh. <laughs> Make him run. This is going to get fun. Hello. Hey. Uh, I forgot the name of the person who plays piano. What is it, first and foremost? Her name's Kim. Kim. Would Kim be interested in a piano battle with Michael Sanchez? Michael Sanchez. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey. The question we're is, on. would Michael be interested? So you think you can turn you can you can talk Michael into it? We're gonna do that. Come on, Michael. Come on, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Do you guys you guys don't probably have any clue how blessed you are to have a young man like that that is world class talent right here at Shadow Mountain. I mean, he's, he's world. You know what we did when we were home in the pandemic? We watched him on live stream because we're Michael Sanchez fans. <laughs> so they're working it out. While they're working it out, was there another question back in there, Grant? We have one right here. All right. They were asking how Kim got so good on the piano. That, that was really their question. Practice it makes perfect. No, she, it, it's an unusual story. She, was, she prayed for a gift at three years old. She did not take piano lessons to learn to play the piano. It came as a gift because she asked God one Sunday after her dad preached a sermon how God gave King Solomon a gift in the scripture. She said, God, I want a gift really bad. And after that, she found out she had perfect pitch. That means she can hear that our bus runs in the key of D flat. She understands pitches just by hearing them, not by association on the keys. And so that process gave her the ability to play the piano by hearing things and she could duplicate them. Matter of fact, she was the main church pianist by the time she was age six because she could play the piano better than any adult in the church. Wow. The thing that made it exciting is the song leader was 56 and the piano player was six. All right, Grant. How did you and your wife meet? How did we meet? Actually, we met through music. This is interesting. My sister is a choir director at a Christian school just like this in Indianapolis, Indiana, and she had a piano player for her choir by the name of Kim Keaton. <laughs> And my sister said, you got to meet the piano player that plays for my high school choir. And that's how it happened right there. You guys got it ready? They're still working on the battle. Anybody else? Oh, we got a question right here. This gal right here. How did you originally, like, get into it? Like, how did you find, like, the courage, or, like, not the courage, but, like, the passion to go out with your family and uh, do this type of thing? It's, oh, there's something in, in life that can happen called a calling. There is difference between a calling and a career. I was 14 years old, and my, my mom and dad bought me a brand new stereo for my birthday when I was 14. And one of my favorite, uh, uh, they were Christian music artists, they bought me a brand new record by them, and I was sitting there that night listening to that, 14 years old, and God spoke to me. It was clear as could be. As a matter of fact, it was so clear, I started crying and I fell on my knees, and God said, that's what I want you to do with your life. And I never doubted that. So by the time I finished high school and started college, this is the honest truth, guys, and you're going to find this hilarious, but I would not date any girl unless she could play the piano. I was so sure I was called to do this, and I knew I couldn't play the piano, and I had to have somebody who could. Don't you think I married the best? <laughs> I mean, we're about to find out here. Okay, is this crowd ready for, oh, we've got another, let's do this question first. 
how, uh, how old were you when your or how old were your kids when they first started performing? Okay. They all were either age two or three. So what I did is I came to the conclusion that the best way to grow your or to have a music group is to grow them yourself. And if you start them early enough, they don't have stage fear. So these kids have never had stage fear because they started singing before they knew enough to be scared. And so they all started singing between two and three. Matter of fact, Brooklyn sang her first night with us. She was three years old. And she did have one moment of stage fright because we were on the first song and she looked at the audience. We had gotten through the chorus and everything and it was time for her to sing more. And she looked at the crowd and she said, I don't like these people looking at me. And she sit, went and sat down on the front seat and the song was done. So, but they all started between age two and three. Are you guys ready for a Michael Sanchez, Kim Collinsworth piano war? Come on, let's hear it. Let's hear it.
Hey, I think we had another question up there somewhere, Grant, and we didn't get it in. I want to get this in before we go. Right here is Jeremiah. What you got, Jeremiah? Jeremiah. Uh, what's your favorite song to perform? Whew. Boy, that's a hard, that is a very difficult question. Matter of fact, I'm not going to answer that. I'm going to let this crew answer it. So, uh, Brooklyn, do you have a favorite song you like to perform that the Collinsworth family does? Mm, we have a cool Christmas song. It's called We Do Christmas Like We Mean It. And that's one of my favorite ones to perform. To perform, yeah. yeah. I think my favorite one would be I Call Him Lord. We did it yesterday here in the services here. Kim, you got a favorite one that you really like to do? Too, too, too hard on the spot. I have 150. I'm not sure I can choose one. But. <laughs> how, about, how about you, Courtney? You got something? At Calvary. Uh, that's a great old hymn. I love that. How about you, Philip? You got something? That one we just did. Just fun. did. You like that one? That one that Philip just did. That's his favorite one to do. Did you have any more? Where, where did Grant go? I'm up top. Up top, oh. wherever you are. Right. Here you go. Okay. Got another one up there? Who's the best singer? <laughs> Ooh. You choose. Yeah, you got, you know what, who the best singer is? It's whoever you think it is. You got another one up there? Uh, I'm going to pass on that question. Okay. <laughs> All right, George, what you got? He's going to pass on that one. Hey, do any of you guys play the guitar? Do any of us play the guitar? Yes, we do. Miss Livia right here, is, that's her guitar behind her. She plays that guitar, and Philip plays the bass guitar. So, yep, we've got a guitar player in here as well. I'm, I'm looking to see if you've got one more up there, Grant. Yes, sir, right here. Is it fun to be on the road all the time? <sighs> you know what? I'm going to let this crew answer it. Philip, you get started at answering it. It is fun. It is fun. You can see a lot of cool things. Yep. Well, I like coming to California. Beautiful yep. state. Very cool to see because we, we live back east. It's not as cool looking. <laughs> but uh, so traveling, getting to see a lot of things is cool. You do get tired, but... Yep. Traveling and seeing a lot of cool things is fun. And we've gotten to go uh, overseas. We've been to Europe. Uh, we got to sing at the White House. So we've gotten a lot of fun things we got to see. I see you going around over there, Grant. You got another one somewhere? Um, where's your favorite place you've ever traveled? Oh, where's the favorite place we ever traveled? You want to get that? Brooklyn? Probably Hawaii. Yeah. That was one of my favorites. We got to sing in Hawaii. Um, Alaska was a good one. Um, yeah, those are probably two of my favorites. Norway. Norway. We went to the country in Norway. That was the, one of these days I'd love to sing for the Queen of England, but I don't know, she's getting up there. I don't know if we're gonna make it before she goes off to heaven. That would be fun. The, these guys are having fun. What, how are you on time? Do you want another question? Yep, let's do another one, Grant. What's the most people you've ever performed in front of? I think it was 15,000. Where was that have been? That was the the Air Canada Center. Oh, the Air Canada Center in, in Toronto. Orlando, Florida. Toronto. Oh, no, in Toronto. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was thinking of the night in Orlando, but that night in Toronto, Toronto. was probably... We were part of the Gaither Homecoming uh, tour, and I think that at the uh, Toronto, Ontario, was probably the largest crowd we've ever performed in front of. Yeah, he's got another one up there. Hey, this is fun. Do you ever plan on stopping traveling? So do, do we ever plan on retiring? Well, every once in a while, our buses make, makes us retire because they break down. But no, we will probably, I don't know, we haven't made a decision exactly how long. We've done it 22 years. Uh, you know what we're going to do? We're gonna, when the Lord tells us to stop, we're going to stop. Until then, we're going to keep right on going. 22 years. Hey, Kim, do you have anything you want to do? Yeah, I, I just want to say one thing to y'all because it seems like yesterday I was sitting in your seat, and I'm not lying. My dad was the administrator of a school. And I was sitting there, and people were coming and doing chapel like this, and I was sitting in my seat, quiet as a mouse, shy as I could possibly be. You couldn't have gotten me up here to speak to anybody, much less a crowd like this. But I remember what I was thinking while I was sitting in the seats, and I want to tell you all something. I, if you don't hear anything else we say today, I'm going to take two minutes. You can time me if you want. Don't do it because you kids will. I'll tell you. I feel it. You're laughing. That's all right. Listen, but you got to understand something. Where you're sitting right here, the age you are, you are so full of potential. In this very room, there are doctors and nurses. You're going, some of you are going to be doctors. Some of you guys are going to be engineers. Some of you guys don't have a clue what you're going to be yet, do you? The future president of the United States. Some of you could be the future president of the United States. Right here. You're laughing. 
Listen, 30 years from now, you come back to your reunion, you won't be laughing, will you? I want to tell you something. If I could tell you anything of, of importance, it would be this. When I was 14 years old, I totally surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. You say, how'd you get up here to do all this? What do you mean you were named musician of the year? Listen, let me tell you something. All of that is just sideline stuff. And none of that would have ever happened had I not surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. And when I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ, you know what I told him? I was so shy. I'd get up here and play and I'd put my head down. They'd ask me to play for a special and I'd be so embarrassed. And I told God, I said, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. I'll play wherever you ask me to play. I'll sing whatever you want me to sing. I'll go wherever you want me to go. Lord, here's my life. I'm so shy, I can't even hardly stand up in public and, and I'm so embarrassed. But if you'll take my life, just such as it is, I don't really have a whole lot to offer. God, do with it what you want. I'm all yours. I want to tell you something. He has given me a life beyond my wildest dreams. He has given me a life I could never have sat down and scripted out for myself. And y'all know the scripture if you go to a Christian school, Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you. He knows the plans he has for you and you and you and you and you and everybody in this room. He knows the plans. He has a specific. You're sitting here going, yeah, 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 whatever. You don't know my life. You don't know where I come from. You don't know the trouble I have. You don't know the depression I deal with. Let me tell you something. God has a plan for your life. Absolutely designed only for you. You're the only person that can fulfill it. And when you surrender your life to Jesus Christ, you'll be amazed at what he will do with your life. I want you to come, Lives. We're going to close this thing out. We got a flight to catch in just an hour and a half or so to head back to Cincinnati. But we're going we're gonna to close out with this. And if you don't remember anything that we've said today, don't forget this. Give everything you've got to Jesus because the potential you have in your, in your life right now, the potential you have, listen, it's God's gift to you. What you do with that potential is your gift back to God. He knows where you're at. He knows your name. He knows your address. He knows every thought. He knows every hair on your head. And he wants to do great things in your life. He knows exactly how to get you there too. I want you to listen. Go ahead, Liz. Psalm 139 says, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. And Joshua 1, 9 says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Should take.
Pastor Grant and all of you, it has been an honor to be with you this morning. We have enjoyed our time together. I love it when you want to interact. We're all done, Pastor Grant, unless you've got something else for us. Well, I think we need to give you all a big thank you for coming to chapel. Thank you all. Hey, I want to pray for you all. I want to pray for you guys on your, on your road back home, and then we'll go ahead and get out of here. Pray with me. God, thank you so much for the fact that you are the God who knows and loves us. And you have a plan for us, just as we've been hearing over and over through these songs and words. And God, we believe that. Just as we believe it right now, sitting here in our seats, God, would you help us to remember it as we eat lunch? Would you help us to remember it throughout the day? Would you help us to remember that um, all throughout our lives, that you have a plan for us? And that our potential is your gift to us, and what we do with it is our gift back to you. God, we believe that, and we ask that you use every bit of our lives for your glory. Amen. Y'all are dismissed.